you know, I don't want to be a Grinch. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to sit here and complain and say how much a Christmas movie might suck. But, what's going on everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I just got done watching Santa Claus 2. The Santa Claus, by the way. This came out in 2002, eight years after the original The Santa Claus, you know, with Tim Allen. I've already reviewed that movie, was it last year or the year before? And I've realized, well, I have not only not reviewed the sequels, but I've never seen the sequels, and they're all on Disney+. Plus. So, lucky me, guess what I did? In this movie, it's directed by Michael Lembeck. And the plot is we see Tim Allen once again as Scott Calvin. He's still Santa Claus. He's been Santa Claus for, I guess, real time, eight years. And now, all of a sudden, though, there's this new clause. There's this new rule that in order for him to stay as Santa Claus, he has to have a wife. And if he doesn't get the wife by... Christmas, then he will no longer be Santa Claus. Now, first of all, why wasn't this said up front? Why didn't they tell him this from the beginning? You had eight years of this guy being Santa. He could have had eight years to go out and date and find a wife and make this happen organically in a natural, more realistic way. Oh, Disney kids movie, Christmas movie? Come on, you're looking for realism about Santa Claus? It's not realism in that sense. I just mean, this is all forced. This this urgency, this drama of him having to find a wife in this amount of time is could have been all avoided. Could have all been... It's just it's not necessary. Uh, so he has to crash course looking for a potential wife in just, what, a few weeks and and you see uh, a lot of the same actors from the first film even his son Eric Lloyd who plays Charlie he's now like a teenager and this kid is so annoying <laughs> he just he's a, he's a, your typical teenager who's whining complaining and oh why do i have to do this oh why do i have to keep the secret do you know what that's done to me because i've known that you're santa but i can't tell anybody because of this and that and blah 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 and I'm just like dude who cares <laughs> who cares about what you have going on in your pathetic little life he's going around and he's being rebellious and he's causing trouble in school and, and that's supposed to be okay because of what he's dealing with and i just Screw you, Charlie. You grew up to be an ass. If I'm being completely honest, you see the same actors who play the parents, his ex-wife, Wendy Crewson, Judge Reinhold, who's the new husband, who's now, I guess, a little nicer because they know about the whole Santa Claus stuff, so they're a lot more cool. David Krumholtz is back as Bernard and... And he might be the only thing that I was sort of enjoying every time I saw him. And he'd pop up and do his little remarks and his one-liners. I mean, he, he doesn't get as much to do, definitely, as the first film. But it was still nice to see him there. Elizabeth Mitchell plays Carol. She is the principal to the high school. And when Tim Allen starts to interact with her through, uh, about the son, he just naturally starts to fall for her. And and because he's getting closer to the the Christmas date on whether or not he could be Santa anymore, he starts to lose the the beard and the white hair and starts to lose the weight. So he's starting to look more Tim Allen-y. And him and Carol develop these feelings for each other. And honestly, that was okay. It was fine to watch that. I mean, I like her as an actress enough to where I'm trying to go along with it but then when you crash course to the end and it's like they've barely been dating i mean they barely said that they had feelings for each other it's like we have to get married because of this rule and she's just okay with it and it's just like oh uh, this why are we showing kids this movie why are we saying hey kids as long as you meet somebody and and have feelings for them just get married <laughs> because that's how marriage works that's how marriage happens 
the other stuff, though, like, you, you know, you, you see some of the other fairy tale characters, like the Tooth Fairy, which that was a little cringy to watch. I'm being, I'm being honest with you, this Tooth Fairy. Now, like, this actor playing the Tooth Fairy, I, I don't have his name written down, but I remember seeing him in Boy Meets World. I want to say season six, he played the father of these girls that worked at this diner that Corey and Sean are. And just in that episode, he was playing such a tough, macho father. Seeing him as the Tooth Fairy here, sure, you got range, dude. <laughs> Completely different, but it, once again, was awkward as all hell. Uh, but the worst thing, this is why I didn't enjoy this movie. This is definitely the worst hardest thing to watch about this film is the evil Santa. This was brutal to watch uh, because Tim Allen has to go back home and try to find Mrs. Claus. You have to have somebody as Santa at the North Pole, right? You have to have somebody there who's getting Christmas going. So they create this toy version of Santa Claus, so nobody else can tell that he's not really there, and yada yada. And uh, it, it's it's still Tim Allen playing this, and it's so bad, like, uh, the jokes that they, I mean, are they really jokes? Some of these, these lines and these materials and these puns, these Christmassy puns, I'm just like, this movie's rated G. So in comparison to the last film that, sure, it was PG, it wasn't even PG-13, but the first movie still had some edgy humor to it, still had some adult humor that was woven in very subtly. So, like, I didn't get it when I was a kid, but when I rewatch it now, I say, holy crap, that was actually a pretty funny joke. I get that reference. This movie is so bottom of the barrel with the jokes. You're, you're, you're playing to the lowest common denominator of a child, like one to two years old, and like maybe they'll find it funny. But this evil Santa, he was annoying. He becomes a tyrant, and he takes over the North Pole and has his Nutcracker soldiers take over, and, and they're going to destroy... Uh, Christmas, they're going to give everyone coal and all this stuff, and you just, you you watch this, and you think, why? Why did we come back eight years later just to do this lame, half-ass story, this half-ass plot, this unnecessary, unneeded sequel that I am watching? Uh, why? Why? Just why? This, this... Not the worst thing I've ever seen, but definitely not something that I care to watch or put into my yearly Christmas rotation of movies. So guys, let me know in the comments below what do you think of the Santa Claus 2 and how lame do you think it is? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Like, comment, subscribe. Later.